I haven't always liked open houses. I thought, why should we have an open house? We always welcome visitors. That, so why should we have an open house? Well, fellow Toastmasters, I've changed my mind. Uh, I've been doing research. I've had just recently two open houses that I helped orchestrate. One was very successful and one not so well done. But I'll cover those. But I started looking around and saying, why should we have an open house? And in my research, I found six reasons. You, I know you're thinking of one right now, aren't you? Like to bring people into the club, right? Well, let's take a look at some of these other potential reasons. They're right here. Of course, we want to attract new members. That's what you see first and foremost. But I'm in a club where we have several speakers who are edging towards being keynote speakers, international speakers. One is already an international speaker and very popular. And we might want to have an open house to to demonstrate, show off the culture of that club for people who may also want to be keynote speakers would be an, an attraction to them. Uh, promote public speaking, of course, we want to show people that they can become better leaders and communicators through Toastmasters. And that of course would attract new members. But let's say we wanted to bring people we wanted to attract the community around Cheyenne Library, just the immediate vicinity around Cheyenne Library. We could promote something that attracts them, something that's in, in their interest. So we could do it that way. And of course, when you do this, you want to engage your members. And by having an open house, you can really do that. And I'll go into more of that in a moment. And then finally, sometimes we just go to a club because it's it's Toastmaster night and we're gonna go. But it could enliven our club and renew our spirit, remind us why we became a club in the first place or came to Toastmasters in the first place. So those are the reasons for being a toast, uh, becoming a Toastmaster, having an open house, but how do you go about it? Well, first and foremost, I think that we need to have, we need to advertise it. And how do you do that? You see this right here? This is a, a post that I made for our open house for the Toast of Celebration. No, I didn't do it just with my picture on it. Even better, I did it with everyone's picture on it. We have we're currently it's sitting at 25 people in our club. I gave it to 20 people in our club for them to put on their own social media, whether it be Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or LinkedIn. They were open to put it on wherever their social media circles are. And see this lady up in the upper left-hand corner? That's Tammy. And when I gave it to Tammy, I checked on her Facebook page because we're friends on Facebook. The very next morning, she had 69 likes on that. I'm going, wow, if 20 people could do that, look at the, all the friends and family that we would be enticing to come to an open house. That is an outstanding way in my book on bringing people into Toastmasters or an open house the very first time through friends and family. But there's one more way. You see this flyer that you see right next to me? Well, this flyer, I printed up and I printed up a lot of copies and I gave it to all the club members. And I asked them, this is in the Toast of Celebration, as you can see. In the toast of celebration, I asked them to take it to work and give it to coworkers, and they did. And I'm, I gotta tell you that I think that was the most successful part of 
this whole open house thing because on open house day we had seven people come into our open house three of them signed up and I think all but one of them were co-workers where they had given a co-worker one of these cards and got them to come to the club open house. So now we can see maybe there's a way of doing this to getting people to come to our open house. Now let's, okay, so now we have the open house uh, set, but now what do we do? And, the, one of the very most important things that we need to do is have a dynamite agenda. I mean dynamite. And this is one that I found from, I believe I got this from District 60. That's uh, Toronto, Canada. But I was really impressed with what you see here. Of course, you have your Toastmaster, a very experienced Toastmaster. And then you would have a guest speaker. And our toast of celebration, we had this fellow named Donald, that one fellow I mentioned about being an international speaker, but I got him to come to this club and speak on how Toastmasters changed his life. Now, Donald, when he joined Toastmasters, I think it was 2013, he stuttered. And now his stutter's gone. He's written several books and, and now he's going around the world speaking. He just came back from Africa on a speaking tour. And they even named an award after him over there. But So getting a good outside speaker, get in somebody from the outside, someone who will talk about Toastmasters. And of course, we want to talk up Toastimonials. Why did you become a Toastmaster? We ask that of our members, whether they be new members or, or experienced members, but we ask them, and that's going to remind or tell the guests, they'll be saying, that's why I'm here tonight. That's why I'm here. So they'll see the reason and how it's working for others. Of course, I think we should start to introduce pathways so that way guests will understand that we are being helped by Toastmasters International giving us guidelines on how to become better speakers and leaders. And that's all in Pathways. Of course, throughout, our Toastmaster could spice all the way through all the things that weren't highlighted with the testimonials. Our Toastmaster could highlight additional benefits of Toastmasters. And then table topics. In the Toast of Celebration, our, our open house, we had seven table topics. But guess who did the table topics? It was all of the visitors. We made the questions very easy for the visitors. And so they all had the opportunity to get up and speak in front of the group. So we made it easy for them and it gave them a chance to practice their public speaking. Now, here's one thing that we didn't do, and that is to make enough time toward the end or anywhere in between for networking. Just take a break for 10 minutes and allow for question and answers or to allow some people to go ahead and sign up, get started right then and there. We can ask that magic question. You know what the magic question is, don't you? Would you like to join? <laughs> That's the question we want to ask during that networking break. And then we could even have a raffle right at the end. We didn't have it at the toast or at this other one that I helped with. But I think that's another way of just enhancing the whole atmosphere of the open house. Okay, now we've seen how we can go about advertising it and how setting it up. But now let's say it's the day of the open house. Yes, we have our other roles set with the Toastmasters speaker and the table topics all set. But here's some other things I'd like to draw your attention to. We, we no matter where we are, we need to have a sergeant at arms who gets there early. I'm telling you from learning the hard way, gets there early, sets up all the signage, and sets all the tables and chairs up, gets everything stationed first and foremost. Just have that all ready. 
And then additionally, we'll have a greeter at the door for the guests as well as the members. And all people who come in the door, if they don't have a name tag on, then the greeter will then write out a name tag. We'll have those printed out and, and you just write the name on there. So everyone has a name. And of course, you know, we're supposed to be wearing our name tags at every meeting. But when the greeter's done, they'll take and write their name additionally and put it into a bowl. And that bowl will be the bowl that we use for the raffle at the end of the meeting. And then the greeter turns that guest over to the vice president of membership, who would then have them fill out the log, guest log and give them the guest folder so they can have all the other information about Toastmasters, including the application. Now, all meetings are, are, are hybrid, almost uh, very few clubs are in-person only. So you need to have someone, a, a Zoom tech, you could call them, that comes in and sets up the microphone, the camera, the TV, and any other ancillary things that, for that meeting itself. And try to have them divorced from the sergeant at arms so that you don't have one person doing double duty because then you want that Zoom tech to have everything perfect. And I do mean perfect. And then lastly, we could have an online greeter. Not everyone can make it to the meeting in person or the open house in person. And you then assign them, if they're going to join us online, to greet any online guests. Because quite often we fail to get the online person's email address and sometimes even their name. So have our online person pre-assigned so that way that is all taken care of. All right, I think I spoke rather rapidly, but I think if we could take and have a well-publicized open house and have a dynamite agenda, we put those two things together and a great team coming together that we can have a great open house and even better, I think we should plan an open house with all of this in mind and just make it happen and make this club grow and help people become better leaders and communicators. Mr. Toastmaster.